Uh, but we wanted to kind of, again, recap on, on where things are and where things are heading in the TR398, which is the Wi-Fi performance testing being undertaken by the Broadband Forum. The Interop Lab is a, similar to .11 Labs. We're working directly with the industry over a number of years to support essentially testing and exploration of these type of spaces with all of that effort being funded directly from the industry at large. And then we're participating directly with the organizations, whether it be IEEE or Broadband Forum, that are directly involved in in supporting the industry uh, to develop these technologies, the testing, uh, as well as the markets at large. And so the Broadband Forum really is, is focused on bringing together the community of, of the network operators, the, the equipment manufacturers, the chipset manufacturers, laboratories, and, and other parties that have a vested interest in essentially seeing the proliferation of what really in today's age is connectivity more than anything else. So it's, it's not even, that last mile connection that was traditionally always talked about as like broadband access, whether you were thinking DOCSIS or uh, DSL lines, but really is that is that total connectivity, whether that connectivity stems from a fixed line access or a mobile access, or even the uh, combination of the two for that kind of always on, always connected approach. And as we've seen that shaping up, obviously Wi-Fi plays a considerable impact on that connectivity uh, inside the residences and inside the home. And so that is being felt by a lot of the operator community, I think, as, a, as a, a current pinch point in terms of having to support customers and their subscribers, where they're kind of synonymously treating the Wi-Fi performance and the Wi-Fi connectivity with the service offering from their network service provider. I think the simplest way to explain this is if anybody thinks about the last time that they went to a friend or a neighbor or a family member's house and they asked a uh, you know, do you have internet? That's not the question that gets asked. It's it, the question that gets asked is actually, do you have Wi-Fi and what's your password? And so that's really where the thinking of the world has, has gone to. And so to solve some of these performance challenges, uh, the Broadband Forum started work, really started this back, I think in, in 2018, with the first issue being released uh, about a year ago now for TR398 issue one. And today we're, we're well underway in the development of issue two. So the, the broadband forum specifications essentially all continue to evolve and march forward. It's, it's kind of a continuous release process. With respect to the TR398 Wi-Fi, we, we really are trying to hit a, a, a one major release per year. We, we originally were hoping to hit it for February this year, but that's gotten pushed back a little bit towards the, the summer of this year. And in the terms of the, the broadband forum, that would be sending stuff out to what we call a straw ballot. So the straw ballot is essentially similar to last call comments that you may have in other standards body or last comments from the other forums or organizations. Yeah, Lincoln, the original target was like MWC, right? And we originally were hoping we could capitalize on Mobile World Congress. So, so, so is the fact that TR398 is delayed, is that the reason they just canceled MWC? <laughs> I, I'm not going to do to probably joke too much about that, but yeah, like it it, it does work uh, well for us that we, we weren't able to hit that, and um, we'll be picking up kind of marketing and, and pushing out some some kind of announcements around the 398 over the summer time frame um, from this. So to recap from folks of, of where 398 is and what the coverage is, this is really aimed at performance testing, focusing on the carrier grade requirements. And so the, the carrier grade requirements are, are essentially kind of code talk for saying we're taking what the operator community is communicating to the BBF in terms of what they need for performance targets and translating that into a test plan for the types of devices that they would be providing to the subscribers. So the, the first focus on this is, is largely around the AP devices. That's all of what was covered in issue one for that. So it's kind of centralized around the idea of an operator providing a, a, a broadband gateway and the gateway having a wireless connectivity to it. The overall testing is focused you know, on the uh, six areas you can see over on the right-hand side of the screen. The slide where we're covering, you know, RF performance, bandwidth, coverage, capacity, interference, as well as some stability testing. Overall, the testing has focused on a pragmatic approach where it's not looking necessarily at what is the bleeding edge of science, where you, you know, when we were developing the testing for AC, obviously you can have four spatial stream devices, and, and a lot of folks like to show four spatial streams talking to a four spatial stream client, and, you know, many gigabytes of bandwidth. 
However, the operators looking at you know the actual devices that are connecting to their networks are, are looking at you know two spatial screen clients and similar like smaller devices that they have to support that connectivity. They want to see what the performance requirements are around those type of environments, not necessarily just what's the per the highest throughput number that you could put on the outside of the package. So focusing on the two spatial streams on uh, a reasonable number of cases, attenuation steps, et cetera, that kind of best give them their coverage from that. And all of that then boils down to essentially one of the industry first test plans that is coming out with absolute performance requirements based on like a pass fail decision point to be able to try to essentially allow operators to have a go no go decision on how they're evaluating these type of devices. I have a question. Is that going to be uh, conducted or over the air measurement? It seemed like a lot of it was feature set evaluations and conducted measurement. So the question, well, the question was, was it going to be conducted over the air? Just for, uh, um, for here. Yep. So the, I can answer that now. Um, actually, that leads right into the next slide pretty well, actually. So what I, I wanted to capture was what is our current implementation of the TR398 testing. Um, this is obviously based on the Octoscope equipment with the Box 38s and PAL 6s, as well as PAL 24 PAL 25s acting as the stations. TR398 and really the, the Broadband 4 methodology has always been to avoid where possible specifying specific equipment while specifying absolute requirements on how the test implementation is set up. And so TR398 talks about the allowed uh, maximum amount of interference that can be present from like an external source into the test chambers, but it doesn't necessarily say that you must implement this using conducted pass or unconducted pass or a single chamber with attenuators strapped to the outside of the AP or the station, kind of like Craig was talking about with the adding the attenuator between the AP and the antenna, or if you wanted to implement this with like an octoscope quad antenna and the, the near field antennas. It does expect that you would have your setup biased to what is kind of like the reference setup where you have essentially a station, a two meter air gap, and then the AP, right? That's kind of the base case that sets the first set of the attenuation characteristics that you would expect to then reference everything else to. So hopefully that answers the question. Okay, so like I said, this is how we've currently implemented the testing. This gives us kind of the best coverage of essentially all of the, the first issue of the testing, as well as giving us some of the research capabilities for things like AX, as well as moving towards other technologies like roaming and mesh. And those things are actually where we're aiming for some of the features that will be coming into the issue two test plan. So on the next slides, I think I start to dig into where things are going. As I mentioned before, this is, is aiming at the carrier grade type testing. So while things like client steering aren't necessarily based on pure IEEE specifications in terms of how things are implemented, they are technologies and techniques that operators do utilize in the deployment to set expectations and how they actually are able to help tune the performance of their, their subscribers networks based on the configuration settings that they're managing on like those devices that they're providing out there. And so they were interested in having test cases like that that would go you know, above and beyond essentially what may be specified directly in the IEEE. Where we're at today is we have test cases drafted, but then we're pulling in the, essentially the additional refinement and operator input for setting what is that performance expectation on things like client steering. Another case that would be very similar to that is the automatic channel selection where the test case is drafted, but now the operators are kind of working to come to a, a conclusion on what do they set on the performance expectation, similar to does this need to be performed, for example, each time that you would be turning on at an access point, or does it need to be performed regularly, periodically, how long does it take, you know, those, those are the type of kind of performance expectations that are, are being discussed uh, to help kind of drive what is that, that good, bad bar setting for the absolute metrics. Client steering between APs. So this is where we're starting to like add devices beyond just a single AP. So this would be starting to bring in the mesh technologies. In the Wi-Fi Alliance world, this is the uh, Wi-Fi mesh or easy mesh specifications. The Broadband Forum has an open source project, OB Map, in collaboration with Purple on working on building a, a reference implementation for that. Been a little bit in a holding pattern on that in terms of letting those projects get underway and, and more established to then start looking at what would be some of the performance setting or the performance expectations on 
a deployment, they would have the multiple APs and roaming between those APs, but I do expect that that work's gonna pick up essentially between our Q1 and our Q2 meetings this spring time frame. There obviously is a lot of discussion around the 802.11x stuff. So as it exists today, the, there, there's discussions going on about what is the, the kind of deployment cases for 802.11ax and then adding that into the existing TR398. A lot of that work is looking at like what are some of the best practices for deployment, uh, channel width, et cetera. Again, you know, we're testing at an absolute to try to hit that that perfect performance bar. People like to look at like, oh, well, if I turn on 160 megahertz of bandwidth, I get these huge performance numbers and look at the throughput values and isn't that wonderful. However, when it comes to operators that are dealing with trying to move devices out into the field, they're, they're working in cases where they might actually be deploying these systems to multi-dwelling units and such, where you have interference between you know two APs that are for customer A and for customer B. And so deploying everything with the maximum bandwidth possible and then having huge amounts of overlap and contention wouldn't necessarily always be in the best interest for the deployment. So some of this is, is kind of coming up with what are those best practices and then developing what the additional requirements would be for the existing test cases based on those best practices on the deployment. And then the other thing that 802.11ax is starting to bring in is looking at additional 802.11ax only features. So just a, at the, this point, it would probably be um, for issue two more of kind of a, a, just a spot check of is the AP supporting OFDMA? Is it supporting the, the additional MCS higher density rates there? Less potentially, I think at this point on like the performance bar on those, but really I think that the concern that the operators would have is making sure that the, the hardware is gonna be able to be supporting those feature sets so that you know things could be turned on with you know firmware updates in the future and stuff like that to the field where they're they're looking for you know the products that they're deploying out into the network to have you know specific lifespans before they would actually have to go out and replace hardware because that starts to become a, a more expensive or more concerning process. The tier 398 as it is being used today, a number of operators are actually using it to evaluate the equipment coming into their solution. We're personally working with at least one operator to provide testing directly on this as they're evaluating products that go into their network. There's also one regulator at this point that is using tr 398 as essentially a basis for evaluating Wi-Fi solutions that are coming from different operators. So overall, the usage and the uptake of the 398 specification has continued to grow since its launch last year at the same time. So this is probably in my history of working in standards, probably one of the fastest ramp ups I've ever seen for something coming out of a standards body in terms of test plan and getting adopted and getting utilized by, you know, really all parts of the, the industry all at the same time. And I think that's really kind of driven a lot of our push for trying to get, you know, another release out for augmenting and, and improving the TR398 within the next year, like from when we launched the first one. So again, summer 2020 now from that. And so where we're, you can get involved in terms of this process is if you're you know obviously interested in helping shape the tests or the requirement sets, there's definitely an opportunity to participate there. We're always happy to have the community participating in the data gathering that's used to set the pass fail metrics. So those metrics are generally set based on experimental data of real devices. They're not pulled from theoreticals because in the history of the BBF, we've found, you know, as we've done other performance testing that over the years, it, it really makes a lot more sense to base this on what is the, the, the current state of art of the technology that's available and not what the standard says is the theoretical maximum rates, which are not always translated directly to a real deployment. And so the, the approximate schedule for this work is we'll have a, a Q1 face-to-face -face meeting coming up in the beginning of March. For folks that are broadband forum member companies, that meeting you can attend either in person or just because of some of the ongoing uh, travel concerns around the world, we are actually making that meeting very accessible for folks that are unable to travel. So again, if you're a broadband forum member and you're interested in being able to participate remotely during that, that week, that will also be possible. Followed up, that will be a Q2 meeting. This is the meeting in June where we'd be trying to launch to this draw ballot of the, the meeting of the, the document going out for those last call comments. And then we're gonna have a teleconference schedule that I'm assuming will be fairly aggressive in between those meetings to, to really kind of get all the work buttoned up. So that'll be happening.